Hey guys, it's Chansey. Um, today I'm just going to be doing a little video about um, APS and how it has pertained to this pregnancy. I don't have a lot, whole lot of things to update y'all guys with. Um, I'm 17 weeks uh, as of yesterday and things have been going really, really great. I'm kind of in between that phase. I had a, did have a doctor appointment last week, um, but there really wasn't a whole lot to update y'all guys about. We walked in and it was maybe a 10 minute appointment altogether. Um, no ultrasound, no none of that. They just checked on a Doppler, the heartbeat, um, and was like, all right, great. Looks great. Didn't even do blood work, nothing. So really there's not a whole lot to update y'all guys with. But um, my next doctor appointment um, will be the 20 week one, which is obviously a big one. All right, so on to the APS side of things or antiphospholipid. For those of you that follow me because you also um, deal with APS, um, I am just going to go over this pregnancy. I'm not going to go back from past pregnancies. I've updated y'all guys on past videos if you want to see how it has pertained to those pregnancies. But um, for this video, I'm just going to start off with this, this pregnancy. And as y'all guys can see, I have officially reached <laughs> the point of pregnancy where I'm the swelling is real and I can no longer wear my wedding band. However, this hand that has not gotten swollen. Weird, I know. Anyways, back to um, APS. So first off, let me say in past videos, I've kind of went over how in order to do surgeries like the hysteroscopy, um, I have needed to go on birth control, which if you have APS, you know, is a big no-no. There's no birth controls. However, um, just, or this exact, whole same situation um I was starting all of my IVF medications um which also to our hormones and are not good for APS uh, and so because of this my endocrinologist or reproductive endocrinologist got with my rheumatologist and they just agreed that by doubling up my aspirin the daily dose of aspirin that I'm on, which is just the 81 milligrams, um, by doubling that during this time period to prepare my, while I was on the shots and things like that, to prepare my body to get ready for the egg retrieval back then, um, that as long as I wasn't on it for the medications for a very long period of time, and if I was doubling up that aspirin in that period of time, that I would be okay due to my levels not being super, super high. So that is what we did. We just doubled up the aspirin for the meantime um, to get ready for the egg retrieval. Um, egg retrieval, everything was pretty much normal. After post egg retrieval, I did stay on the double dose of aspirin, um, but I was not quite on the Lovenox yet as we had not put the embryo back inside. I had about a month span where I was just on that aspirin. At, towards the end of that month, I had started on the progesterone shots and more medications to get ready for the um, embryo transfer. In that time, we went ahead and um, started the hydroxychloroquine, first off, and then um, prednisone. And so I was also on those, which kind of work. There hasn't been a whole lot of studies saying hydroxychloroquine chloroquine helps, um, or Plaquenil helps with, APS, but it helps with lupus. And there have been like a few studies that have proven that it actually, in fact, also helps with APS. And in my case, I've done a video over this exact drug in the past. Um, it helped a lot. So I was excited to just already be on it, back, back on it. Um, but I had only been off of it for a couple months. Um, and so I started that back. Um, and then it, the day of transfer, like two hours after transfer, I started on my Lovenox, which is a blood thinner that helps um, thin out your blood. So to just recap pretty much in the periods of time that I was on hormones pre-embryo transfer, putting the baby back inside, we doubled up on aspirin. When it came time to the embryo transfer, we added the Lovenox and I went down to just one aspirin. So the Lovenox and one aspirin. Um, and then also a couple days before the transfer, we did the hydroxychloroquine and or Plaquen Plaquenil, whatever you want to call it, and then also the um, prednisone, which I had never been on before. This was my first time on prednisone, um, but I had heard good things about it. I honestly, like, don't know if it helped or hurt or what. I mean, I've had a ton of pregnancies and none of them worked out, and this one, the baby stuck and everything was great, so maybe it was what I needed or that was the difference. I don't know, um, but 
that's what I did up to this point. Oh, I'll also add um, how I had mentioned I doubled up on the aspirin um, pre-surgeries. I did have to go a 24 hour period without any aspirin uh, like the day before the surgery just due to like they don't like to bleed out during the surgery. So I was, I did have like a 24 hour span with no blood thinners, which I know can be risky. Um, I guess to me it was worth it. <laughs> But, um, and the doctors thought I would be okay with that short period of time. Um, and I was. All right, so that's what I'm on up until the transfer day. Baby six, everything's great. Um, a lot of people have told me that they stayed on the prednisone and hydroxychloroquine for a couple weeks and then their doctors winged them off due to my past um, history of miscarriages. My doctor decided that we were just gonna stay, we were gonna like, it didn't hurt to be on them, it didn't hurt the baby. So we were gonna stay on the hydroxychloroquine and Plaquenil as long as possible. And so I stayed on both, and obviously the Lovenox and aspirin. I stayed them on, or on all of them until I was exactly 12 weeks. At that point they said, there was nothing that these, the Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine were going to help. Um, and so it was time to get off of them. I got off of those. I will continue to stay on the Lovenox and the um, aspirin up until later, later in pregnancy, but or the day before I deliver, hopefully. Um, but for at 12 weeks, I got off of the hydroxychloroquine and Plaquenil. I had heard if you stay on it that long and you're not winged off to where it's like smaller doses over time, which in my case, we did not. We stayed on the full dose the entire time, all 12 weeks. I had heard that sometimes your body can um, have withdrawals, like they get addicted to, to those drugs. And I thought, you know, I, I've also heard that progesterone causes knots. I've also heard all these things and I was just fine. Oh my gosh. When I tell you that I had migraines, I, like I'm not exaggerating. They were the worst kind in the world where your like head is like just pounding and you can barely lift it for nine straight days. Like I, and I had like weird times where I was shaking. I had major withdrawals from the hydroxychloroquine and prednisone coming off of it, that strong dose. However, if it's what got me to the point of a healthy pregnancy, I'll do that again and again and again any day. Um, but it also tr could have possibly triggered my migraines because still to this day, I got off of it at 12 weeks. I'm 17 weeks. Um, still to this day, I get migraines very, very easily. And when I talked to my OB now um, about it, she said a lot of times these hormones, because I've had previous history of migraines, not this bad, but like here and there, um, she's not concerned. But a lot of times the hormones in pregnancy can trigger the migraines, which causes them to be a whole lot more often. I didn't have any up until the point that I had stopped both of those medications. When I stopped both of those medications, I've had them like every couple days, I get a really bad one. Um, not quite as bad as those nine days that I had it, but like not fun ones. And she said it could last whole pregnancy. It could just be a temporary thing. We'll see. Um, regardless, it's still all worth it, but I'll just throw that out there for you. Uh, so whenever you guys are going through this, you know what to expect. And just so y'all guys know, I figured I'd give y'all the dose that I was on. Um, for the prednisone, I took two a day and they were 10 milligram tablets. Um, I took one in the morning and one at night. And then for the hydroxychloroquine, I took um, a 200 milligram tablet in the morning and 200 milligram at night. So, um, which is actually less than what I used to be on when I've spoke to y'all guys in the past. Um before IVF, I was actually on 800 milligrams a day. I took two in the morning and two at night, um, so 400 milligrams each time. This time I was on a total of 400 daily, um, and it still did the trick for me. So that is what I did up until um, the 12 week mark. After 12 weeks, I've just been on the Lovenox and the aspirin. I've done great. I mean, everything pretty much has stayed the same. I never really have the biggest updates for y'all guys anymore, which is kind of sad. Baby's doing great. Um, I have an at-home Doppler, so I check on him every other day. Um, and he's gotten so big that it's so easy to like find him almost immediately. We went two weeks ago to an outside um, ultrasound place. I did a video actually, and he was 
five ounces then. This week he's supposed to be eight ounces, so we won't see him obviously, um, but we won't see him again until the 20 week mark, which is when they do the, oh, I'm blanking now. Um, uh, this is gonna drive me crazy. The big one where they check all the organs and fingers. Oh my gosh. I'll think of it in a minute. Totally just had to look that up. The anatomy scan. How frustrating. <laughs> anyway, so I have that at 20 weeks. Um, and that'll probably be my next update with y'all guys. Um, as I really like, even my last doctor appointment, like it was so short. There was nothing to update you guys about. Uh, we did go over, however, how um, because of APS, um, there's a higher risk of small baby syndrome and or tiny baby syndrome. One of those two. I can't remember what it was called exactly, uh, which is just where the blood flow slows and it actually causes a slow in the growth of the baby. And so because of that, they like to induce early um, to get the baby out at a healthy, like far enough along that the baby sh will be fine and everything, but also early enough that you're not going to risk going into labor or going through small baby syndrome or preeclampsia or any of those other things that we're at a higher risk with with APS. So she did say at the 30 week mark, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk, we're going to plan exactly what or when we will be inducing. We're going to get a birth date, all that good stuff. Um, and our goal is to not go on heparin, which I know a lot of people will go on heparin twice a day or how many ever times a day um, after a certain period and for like the last two months do the heparin uh, as it only stays in your system for a short period of time my doctor for whatever reason is just 100 percent against heparin was like nope don't like it um and she wants me to stay on the lovinox because of this she wants to induce early enough that we can control it though and 24 hours before going into labor or being induced come off of the lovinox and stay off of it until the baby's here. And then once the baby's here and everything's fine and safe, then putting me right back on it. So really trying to only be off of it for a day. Um, and so that's our plan at 30 weeks to plan out that date and try to make sure that it's early enough that the baby's gonna be safe and everything, but also early enough that um, we can plan accordingly without going into labor. She did tell me uh, some of the things that I just needed to know as far as if for some reason I go into labor before that planned date and I'm on the Lovinox. The downside of that is if it hasn't been so many hours um, or a long time since I had last had my shot, I will not be able to get an epidural. There are certain medications. She didn't tell me what those medications were just yet as it's way, way too early to even be concerned about this. Um, there are certain medications that we can do that counteract the Lovinox. Um, but by the time that it's counteracting, it's still, um, too late for a epidural. So we, the only way we're going to be able to do the epidural is if we plan it out right and I don't go into labor before then. Um, and then she said, but this medication, if we need to go the C-section route, this medication will help thicken the blood, like do the opposite of what the Lovinox was doing to counteract it. So there's a plan in case I do go into labor before this date that we have picked out, but our ultimate goal is to pick out a date that's early enough that I won't go into labor and also late enough that the baby will be just fine. So that's our plan. Also something I forgot to mention, um, at that anatomy scan, I'm also going to be uh, meeting with a maternal fetal uh, medicine doctor for the first time, which is the same as a high risk doctor. My doctor has dealt with a lot of patients with APS. So she personally thinks that she has a plan that she thinks that we can follow, um, which includes me checking my blood pressure once weekly and logging it into an app and she can see the app and monitor it, um, due to like preeclampsia and things like that. So as long as she's monitoring my blood pressure and it's staying at a good range and whatnot, we can prepare ourselves for, the risk of coming into preeclampsia if that occurs. Um, and so she's like, we'll be doing this. Uh, I'll be, she's going to do extra checks herself and whatnot. So originally she had told me I would not need to see the high risk doctor at all. Um, which most APS patients do, um, because she was so knowledgeable on everything. She actually was like telling me things that I hadn't found online and 
I'm a researcher, so I've like have researched so many things and have looked up everything and she knew more. And later whenever I did go and like kind of fact check her, she was right. So it made me feel really comfortable um, under her care. Uh, but and she even like sent me the blood checker for at home and whatnot to do remote monitoring. Um, so she had originally said she was going to handle it. She later turned around and she was like, you know what? I want you to go ahead and see the maternal fetal medicine doctor. And then um, that doctor, like I'm going to get with them and whatnot, just like doctors do. And um, we're going to determine if this plan is right for you. At that time, the maternal fetal medicine doctor may say, yeah, I only need to see you once a month or no, I want to see you every other week. It'll, it'll be all determined the week before my 20 week uh, visit. So um, that's also going to be coming up. So I could or could not be seeing a high risk doctor. I don't know. Um, she'll definitely be in the loop of things. So even if I do stay with my doctor, she'll be also reviewing the results of my blood pressure and things like that. And so if she thinks I do need to come in, then that would, she would reach out to me and let me know. So, um, yeah, I think I might have covered everything. I'm trying to think. Staying on the Lovenox. Um, oh, another thing is postpartum. I'll be on Lovenox and asp well, aspirin for the rest of my life. But Lovenox for uh, three months following postpartum. And then we'll check my labs and all that. Um, and come off of the Lovenox. Uh, but continue the aspirin. Um, but other than that, that is how... I didn't go into like any of the other medications I'm on or whatnot. I just did a video over... APS and how it has changed the course of the pregnancy. So it's worked out really great. So yeah, if you're dealing with APS and if I missed anything um, or if it didn't make sense because I know I just ramble sometimes, please reach out to me. Um, I, I get so used to it because like it's become part of my life and I'm so absorbed in it and I've kind of been in it for a while. I remember in the beginning I was so confused and wanted to know everything. Um, but because it's like an everyday situation now, I kind of forget to mention it a lot of times in my videos. And I apologize because I know this whole channel started off because of APS. Um, and um, I'm so thankful that a lot of y'all guys still follow um, and are just trying to figure out how it pertains. So yeah, if y'all guys have any questions at all, just please, please reach out to me. Um, I'm sorry that you're going through it if you're also going through it. Um, and I'm always here to answer any of those questions. Thanks for following. Bye.